Hello and welcome to the Thursday, May 2nd, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. He got a little binary that has sort of been pestering his honeypot and well, it was uploaded via the Kauri part of the honeypot, which simulates uh, open telnet and SSH server. Sort of run of the mill uh, DDoS agent, uh, interesting kind of uh, that uh, Guy just uploaded it to the assembly line uh, sandbox in order to extract some indicators of compromise. You have to be really careful here with the indicators of compromise because the ones extracted here are definitely not malicious sites, for example. As often, 8888, the Google DNS server, is one of the IP addresses this malware connects to in order to check internet connectivity. It also apparently is downloading like bug reports here for libc, also a very common public URL, likely just as a connectivity check. So uh, don't just blindly use these indicators of compromise. They are often just used by this malware as a connectivity check and they're using benign, well-connected and uh, well, basically websites that are often uh, up and open. Sort of also interesting here, an other public DNS server they're using uh, 114, 114, 114, 114. So four times 114. Uh, that appears to be operated by a Chinese company. Uh, works well for me here, even though it does not look to be any cast. Uh, this IP address, according to Traceroute, does actually appear to connect uh, to China. Maybe the author of the malware is using this in case 8888 or so is not reachable. And of course, that may happen inside China. And Maciej Pokres, a researcher from Poland, did write a blog post with some of the risks of Amazon's S3 billing. This is sometimes called a denial of wallet attack. Sometimes also a denial of wallet amplification attack. Nothing. Fundamentally, new has been discussed before. Uh, for example, in February, there was an article uh, by Ben Liesfeld uh, discussing a similar issue. There are a couple problems with AWS S3 billing. One is that you're being billed for requests that fail. So in the example that Maciej here uh, discussed, uh, in this case was just put requests to an S3 bucket that failed. Well, uh, there were hundreds of thousands of them, which then quickly accumulated thousands of dollars in S3 charges. The other problem that sometimes shows up here is uh, range requests. Someone is requesting a partial file from your server. Well, you may still be billed for the entire file, even if only a small part of the file was actually requested. And worse, an attacker can then just uh, disrupt, basically stop the transfer, and you'll still be billed, which of course then enables an attacker to send multiple new requests. And that's sort of your classic kind of amplification attack, which is sort of where that denial of wallet uh, amplification attack term uh, comes from. Not really much you can do about this other than try to hide the name of your S3 bucket, which of course may or may not work depending on your application. And apparently the implementation of the alternative app stores in Europe is uh, causing a little bit of a privacy issue here for iOS users in Europe. The problem is that websites are able to embed a button that will link to the respective alternative uh, app store. Now, in order to avoid some accidental redirects. There is a user interaction required. That's why it's implemented as a button. So the user has to interact with the button. Of course, a malicious developer could always make this button look like uh, something else that you may be willing to click on. But the problem here is not necessarily just that you may then be tricked into downloading some malicious software. It's that whenever you click the button, you will actually 
transmit a unique authentication token. Uh, that uh, token is derived for each device uh, uniquely. It's also uniquely to a particular app store. But what could happen now is that if various websites collude, like you know, they all put the same ad on their uh, website, this button could then be used to basically link different visitors uh, together to basically the same device if all these buttons are originating from the same app store and doesn't even look like you actually need a full functioning app store you just need to collect the uh, url and the data that's being submitted whenever you click uh, that button overall really well just yet another way how advertisers may be able to track users and then as the AI vulnerability of the day, there is a critical vulnerability in Bento ML allowing for code execution. So double check if you're using Bento LM to better understand what the risks are and how to protect yourself. Proof of concept code has already been published for this vulnerability. Well, and that's it for today. And sorry for publishing yesterday's podcast a little bit late. We may actually end up in some platforms with two Thursday, May 2nd podcasts as a result. So sorry for the confusion. And if you haven't taken a look yet at our Sans Fire lineup in July, currently I count three of our handlers teaching classes. There may be more. I'll have to double check again. But uh, Xavier Boyan and myself, we're teaching class. So hope to see some of you there in person. These classes are offered in person as well as, of course, online. Uh, but we got some special things planned sort of for the in-person part. Uh, so may want to uh, check that out. And thanks and, and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.